Hi, and welcome back to our channel, The Monforts. We did a Q&A on Instagram a few weeks ago, and we thought it'd be a fun video to just answer you guys' questions. Yeah, so we got a couple here. So first question is, what's first on our post-lockdown travel plan? Which I'm sure is a question for a lot of people right about now, is where do we go? What do we do with our trips that we had booked? So what would our first trip be? It's either gonna be my uncle's wedding maybe, or going to see Chantel's family. Yeah, hoping that it's gonna be back to the East Coast, mm. Canada. For Christmas, maybe? Because she can leave the country now because she got her travel visa, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. and I haven't seen my family in a year, yeah. and he hasn't spent much time with them, so we were really looking forward mm. to our wedding in May to spend time with them, but that all got postponed. Goodbye. Last time we saw our parents was in Montreal and that was like the coolest city I think I've ever been to. Still want to go back and travel around there a little bit more. Maybe even go to Nashville too in a couple months for a friend's wedding. Yeah, so first trips, probably Nashville, then hopefully East Coast. It's an array Canada. of like three possible trips. Yeah, everything's so uncertain yeah. now, you just don't know. We have a lot of like flight credits as I'm sure some of you guys do, so might as well use them. Much. You should let us know what your guys' thoughts are about how you're kind of going about your thought process of booking a trip because we just don't know what to do because who knows if it gets locked down again. Yeah. Second question. Okay. Who takes all of your pictures? Good we question. Do. We do. <laughs> so we started <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, that'd be expensive to bring a photographer yeah, we everywhere can afford we go. That. <laughs> can barely drink, afford to drink water. <laughs> So we bought this really cool tripod on Amazon. Mm -hmm. We'll put the link below in yeah. the description. Um, I think it was like $25. It's just like this big. It's like a big. claw. It'll like hook onto anything, hang onto anything, platform anything. Like the legs are like fully adjustable, like noodles. It has a little remote. This remote. That we actually start. use for these YouTube videos too, so we could stop the video whenever. And our iPhone, we actually used to shoot with a Canon, but it's an older Canon. All in this. Yeah, iPhone 11, uh, it works Not great. even the cool one. We only have two cameras, so don't judge us too hard because we don't have three, but it gets the job done. It honestly works really good. The pictures come out less blurry than my Canon. How did you deal with waiting during the K1 process? Did you see each other in between? So real That's quick. A good question. I would like to just say this from the beginning in terms of any long distance relationship, no matter how far, I feel like this was a big key for us is to always have a trip pretty much planned and booked. It's like we always would have a trip planned or booked for either like some three weeks, one month, but we always knew we were gonna see each other in a month or two weeks. I feel like when we didn't have one planned, it was like, we definitely didn't like it. It was a weird feeling to not know when you're going to see each other. So yeah, just have them sure. booked and like be planning the next like two trips ahead. Just It's nice to just always have yeah. a countdown. Like you say bye and regardless if it's 80 days, like it just keeps going you down. You know you're going to see each other on that 80th day unless COVID hits. Yeah, yeah. which sorry for all of you yeah. that are stuck in two different countries. I can't imagine yeah. how you feel. The process is already hard enough, so I can't imagine adding a lockdown. Yeah, so how do you deal with waiting? Like well, honestly, the K1 is like, from start to finish is waiting. Yeah. You submit the paperwork, you're so excited, there's and like, then... There's like all this work to get all the paperwork done, and then you send it in the mail, and it's like... Months and months. Then you months. don't hear anything, you're like, I hope I... Hopefully it's done right, hopefully something isn't snug up somewhere. Like we got the notice saying they got it, and then I think it took like six months to hear back yeah. from them. So I checked the mail twice a day. I checked my emails. I refreshed everything daily, but six months went by until yeah. we found, like got paperwork from them. It is a waiting game. You just can't stress about it. You just kind of triple check your work and send it off. I feel like you just, if you're gonna do the paperwork yourself like we did, that's like your time to stress to make sure that like you did everything correctly. And once you know you did it correctly and you send it out, like the stress is gone. The only thing that's annoying is just waiting for when. And we did see each other in between. So like he said, we always had trips planned. Even though you send the K-1 visa, you could still come to the United yeah. States or he can still come to Canada. So we still had a bunch of trips in between. We still and got to see each other, yeah. Yeah, we never had a hard time we at even, the border or anything. We even made a trip out of the K-1 
interview, so that was that Montreal trip. Now that you live together, what surprised you that you didn't expect about each other? That's a good one. I got so, one. first off, we don't fully live by ourselves just mm. yet, so I feel like this question will probably be a little bit different when we have our own place. Well, Maybe there's, st there's still some pretty good stuff though. Um, okay, you go first because I'm not sure. Um, well, we had only like spent like probably like a two week span at the most together at one time, so I didn't notice it. But I don't know if anybody else is as bad. But she's the worst about getting comfortable like going to bed to watch TV. Like it, like I start falling asleep and then she wakes me up because she's like looks at me. She's like, I'm not comfy. I'm like, how can you not be comfy? You laying in bed is like put your face on the pillow and then you get comfy and you fall asleep but her it's like a puzzle i have to toss and turn yeah. and my blankets aren't comfy she used to tell me she's pillow. uncomfortable or like something's wrong it drives him crazy yeah because i'm like falling asleep and then she's like oh. okay for me i would say well he's more stubborn than i thought he was <laughs> And he probably says the same about me, but I really think he's more stubborn. And another one is that if he doesn't get eight hours of sleep, oh my Everybody god. Everybody watch out. He is the biggest baby. He needs his mm -hmm. eight hours. Like He's like, I only slept seven hours today my, and it is the end of the world. I need my milk and cookies. And... Well, that was a fun question. <laughs> okay, next question. Would love to hear all about your K-1 visa process from beginning to end. Well, this will be like a whole video in itself because- as, It's a long process. And some of you that are going through it or thinking about going through it, you'll come to find out it is a very long process. But I guess briefly it was like deciding which country to go to, then figuring out like the paperwork, all the steps in the paperwork. Just gathering like, yeah. everything they needed. That's what took the like yeah. longest, like police records and mm -hmm. uh, official birth certificate and just little things like that. Yeah, like not a copy birth certificate. It's got to be like the the first one you got. And like there's tons of stuff that we'll go to in the whole video because that's a lot of info in itself. Yeah, we'll go. We started December of twenty. 18 mm -hmm. and we're still I still don't have a green card so it's definitely a long well, the, process she might have had one by now if it wasn't for the whole COVID thing yeah I'd be close a planning a courthouse wedding knowing you have a larger one down the road the courthouse wedding was just like we knew we had to do it for her to stay in the country for the K-1 visa get married in 90 days and we did it like the first like week she was here we did not wait that long at all it was like get here get married send that back out to get the work visa the travel visa we already knew we wanted to be together there was nothing to really test besides my stubbornness and her uncomfiness um, so we just knew we had to have a courthouse it was exciting because we got married but we knew there was gonna like the big wedding later on next question where do you even begin with the process especially without legal help how do you do it so you don't need legal help i mean our situation could be easier than yours because we never had kids before we were never married before i could see those things making it a little bit more paperwork so a little bit more difficulty a little bit more unknown but it's all out there on the internet like there's tons of people that just will like show you step by step how to do it it's possible if you can and you have the time i would just do it yourself and save the legal money yeah, and we just did a lot of research. Honestly, I didn't really know what the K-1 visa was. We weren't sure if I could like get apply for it, get approved and stay in Canada until I can like work in the States. There's just a lot of research behind it and like what the rules were. Mm -hmm. But like he said, um, a lot of YouTube videos, just Googled a lot. There's actually a lot of Facebook groups for like K-1 applicants yeah. that really helped us. I would us. say if you right now like thinking about doing the process, definitely give us Facebook groups because like Yeah, she we'll would put just, them below. She would just ask a question and like sometimes I'll answer you within like a couple minutes. Like people everybody that's already been through it knows how to get through it. Yeah, those people are good. Yeah. Like especially if you're a Canadian wanting to come in the United States. Like life. that group saved our life. So if you're asking where do you even begin with the process, you just gotta research and then I would just look at like the application a little bit because it's got maybe some questions you didn't know about 
or like you didn't think would be honest. Like I remember for me, like it asked me like if I'd ever been fined over like a thousand dollars. And if you have, then it's like an additional amount of paperwork. And I got like a speeding ticket a long time ago, but like it was a, a big one. it was a bad one. So like I had to go. I was like, crap, I can't remember. So I had to go like to the courthouse. They had to pull up my record and it ended up being like a $700 speeding ticket. So I didn't have to put it on there, but it's just like these little things that you would have not thought about. So if you're thinking about doing it, maybe just run through the application real fast. And if something catches your eye, like it could be a snag, you'll maybe have a little bit more time to look into it. Yeah, I would definitely join the group straight away and do your research before sending it off. Just knowing that like in, uh, nine ish months, like you have to be ready to move to the States. And then knowing that you almost can't work for a year, we honestly didn't really know that at the beginning. We thought that I could either stay in Canada and still work. We, it's just like there's so many weird little like details. But maybe if we would have found that Facebook group from like the absolute Day beginning because we didn't find it right at the beginning but i mean from step one that probably would have saved a ton of time just trying to like research or google things to figure out this question when these these people that are in these groups are, are yeah they're good you're like uh application 129 f mm -hmm. line 30 and they're like yep you have to put this we're gonna do a like a whole youtube video about the visa and we'll go way more into detail but that will take forever so yeah. We're not going to talk I, about that right now. I just remember, like, at the time I lived in my dad's house, and I just remember, like, spending, like, two weekends, like, all on the kitchen table, on my laptop, figuring out how to fill out these applications, like, you know, videos and everything. I, I definitely overthink everything, so it doesn't, it shouldn't take that long, honestly, but it should take about a, a solid day to file the I-20. I-1-2, you say it. I-129F, yeah. I think. It's Tongue been a twister. long time. It seems like you guys are really interested in the visa process, so we're gonna get organized and hopefully film that sooner than later to help you guys out. Um, any questions you have regarding the visa, you can always comment. We'll gladly try to help you guys through it. If you like our channel, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Please do. <laughs> It helps us and it makes us feel like we're doing something right. Yeah, we still have no idea what we're doing. I hope every video is improving well, a tiny bit. Just let us know your thoughts. It'd be cool to, to see what you guys are thinking. All right, well, we'll see you next time.